today's session, which will be moderated by Mr. Tobias Winter, Director of the Indo-German Energy Forum. Over to you, Tobias. Thank you very much, Pooja. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Wonderful. Maybe we could ask uh, uh, Mr. Anil Kumarji to also join again. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah. Let me first of all thank you once again, Mr. Anil Kumar and uh, Mr. Ertel, of wonderful presentations. Maybe let's start with some so simpler questions and then let's a uh, little bit dig a little bit deeper into it. Um, maybe we'll start with this question: At which point in the entire supply chain uh, do you see where most accidents actually happen, or there's no accidents happening at all? Is there anything? like an overview on uh, where people should always have their eye on uh, maybe most mr anil kumar yeah so uh, you know the the perspectives uh, like uh, one is the most prominent uh, point for um, accidents are the leak is one of the uh, most source so the designer has to see that we eliminate possible source of leak because not only in the uh, design manufacturing also during the operation where there may be possibility of the leak tightness which may deteriorate over a period of time so one of the aspect is uh, it should be leak proof as far as the installation is concerned so that you. you can contain the aspects Thank you. Mr. Ertel, where are these leaks happening most of the times? Is there anything or you're saying the green hydrogen or hydrogen value chain is so enormous that uh, yeah. leaks could happen actually everywhere and they're dangerous everywhere? I would say um, what I tried to explain is so depending on, on the complete chain, what we saw in, in the previous uh, presentation is uh, every time when you have a handover from one I would say phase to the next, so where the medium needs to be um, transferred from a cylinder to a pipe, from a pipe again to, to a tank. So every time when you have these kinds of connections, these are not considered as I would recall technically tight or uh, durable tight. And then there's a probability that you will have a leak. So what we see, especially when we have uh, handling with trucks, um, filling from um, a plant in, into trucks, to, to, uh, to transport it to the outside. The connection on the trucks, for example, as they are used on daily base with sealing, they lead to leaking. And what the highest risk is always there, um, as we learned from hydrogen needs a very small spark, um, uh, that the earthing is very important to, to do between the different mediums when you transport or you handle hydrogen from a vessel or from a construction into a tank, then and, and it's leaking and the construction is not con correctly earthed, then you can get an uh, explosion or a uh, small combustion. Yeah? So important is there that uh, besides the connection is a perfect or correct earthing connection so that both elements have the same um, voltage level or ground level. And then uh, people are asking, actually, if you see any big changes coming with the green hydrogen uh, economy uh, uh, popping up now. So you know what's happening in gray, but uh, if green comes in, do you see uh, any additional requirements uh, coming in or you're saying it will be the same? Yeah, from my side, I can say what we since this uh, hydrogen uh, came up more into the, I would say, in the mind of the people, is two effects is one is uh, more thinking about uh, and so far it was mostly used in, in centralized so in, in uh, steel plants and refineries now we have the effect of the uh, renewable energy that this is used to produce hydrogen and this is decentralized so you get more and more small constructions producing hydrogen and uh, i would say more people want to learn about it so there are a lot of people maybe miss having not uh, enough knowledge or not using the right, I would say, engineer services like the TÜV to get um, support. And um, so they, they may have to make the learning curve by themselves. And um, yeah, this is one thing. The other is um, what is also growing up is uh, electrolyzer. 
we got a lot of uh, requests and technical questions on how to measure oxygen and hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen in the complete chain, which is, I would say, a very difficult process and uh, you need experts to judge on how to design it in a correct way. So this is what from my side comes up more and more now with hydrogen. Maybe referring to this question again, uh, which point of the entire supply chain you think it will be most expensive actually to uh, invest in to avoid leakages? I would say um, the, depending on how we want to use hydrogen in, in the future, especially in Europe, um, if you use it or you, you create it and use it directly, then I would say it's um, nothing spe specific. But if, we, if you want to think about using pipelines in Europe to, prov to replace um, uh, methane uh, as a fuel by adding hydrogen or to replace it, then you have to rethink the complete infrastructure network in the countries because the pipes are not designed in a way to, to handle hydrogen higher concentration. And uh, you need to think, this was also one of the questions, if you have natural gas, you have always an odorant inside. So if there's a, a leak, you will smell it as a user. With hydrogen, I would say this is a complete change in, in, in the philosophy. Yeah? So you have to rethink about how to make hydrogen safe for people like you and myself in our daily business besides the industry. This, this will be, I would say, the biggest hurdle and, and how to use this, that it's not only used in, in an industry area, but also in, in the community or in the public. Coming a little bit back to being used in industry, so I think there's no doubt, uh, uh, no secret about India being the third largest producer and consumer of gray hydrogen in the world. A lot of refineries are actually looking into how to blend green hydrogen uh, with the, their gray hydrogen on site itself. So you were referring to what's happening in industry, uh, on the industry site itself. Is there any specific requirements, there was a question on it, for refineries actually now having also uh, uh, green hydrogen produced by electrolyzers on site where they actually have to think of new standards and norms to be uh, uh, introduced into their uh, uh, standards and norms to be applied on site. So uh, now coming from gray hydrogen to green hydrogen on site in refineries, is there is there a lot of new things to think about or are you saying what's, what's so different about uh, if it's done by an electrolyzer than by steam reforming? Yeah, so uh, if we're talking about now um, using or producing um, the hydrogen inside by electrolyzer, um, I would say this is there are new standards coming up, especially from the ISO, which I would say look at different elements of these, uh, like the electrolyzer itself or the compressor. So, and there are committees um, in Germany, it's the PTB and the BAM working on this um, because. There is not so much, I would say, knowledge present, or in there is knowledge, but it's not in one uh, put together. Yeah. So there are different committees now working, and uh, they try now to bring this in, in like what we heard in my presentation, in in one document or in one standard. So far, you have several um, different standards for the different elements of uh, the the processes, but there's not, I would say, under one roof so far. And that's, that's the idea of the um, standardization of the ISC and as well of the um, notified bodies to build up the knowledge. Yeah? So and, uh, even if hydrogen is already long time used, um, I would say there's not the competence under one roof completely now. Yeah? Maybe Mr. Uh, Anil Kumar can, can something from point of a notified body to this because he has to, to certify this. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with uh, the point of Marcus. Yes, there is a standard for electrolyzer already in place, ISO 22734. But um, as far as the electrolyzer and then the certification process is in is in you know in the very formative stage, maybe uh, multiple drafters come and then maybe the next year it will come as a formal standard. 
But if you look at the refinery perspective, that is uh, refineries are familiar with those risks associated because electrolyzer pay, per se, it produces hydrogen, but there are associated uh, activities like you have storage of hydrogen and then you know associated pipeline and then electrical and other safety is concerned. But it is the approach uh, perspective may not have much difference because you have process plan, so how you approach for a risk assessment perspective will not have much effect. But rightly, Marcus said, putting all this together, various uh, you know applicable directive together, and come as a product standard to certify, that will come soon. Yes, Mr. Anil Kumar, thank you for uh, storage and transport. You had mentioned uh, for green uh, for hydrogen uh, uh, the exact acceptable codes. So there's a question uh, from the audience, what is acceptable and for whom is these, were these mandatory standards already uh, mandatory in India? Or are you saying these are minimum requirements which actually uh, TÜV Nord is applying? So what is meant by acceptable? And then uh, um, is there an overview actually on which kind of standards are already in place in India? and uh, uh, also already been taken over by and, and uh, uh, um, uh, published by BIS? Or is there any website or standard uh, 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 companion which you can actually recommend for everyone who actually wants to dig deeper into it? You're saying, hey, please, this is the website to visit. There you'll find anything about the green hydrogen economy and the uh, required standard and norms coming up. Maybe I am Mr. Anil Kumar and then uh, uh, Mr. Ertel. Um. Yeah, so as far as um, uh, construction uh, codes are concerned or uh, harmonized standards are concerned, there are standards which is available as one today. For example, um, the pressure vessel code for SME is widely accepted. And the code permit to uh, make design, construction, and manufacturing according to uh, the hydrogen service. So the codes are available. Similarly, for German codes like AD2000, already available and it is acceptable for code for manufacturing of hydrogen uh, pressure equipment. And in Europe, uh, you have also um, uh, EN 13445, and also you have uh, the codes which is for liquefied um, uh, hydrogen so so because for aerospace and then other applications already the liquefied hydrogen is being produced even in india like you know we have uh, companies in india has made about uh, 200 lakh liters of liquid hydrogen tanks made in india and exported so there are uh, the codes and standards and manufacturing capabilities also within india for you know the the, the hydrogen uh, tanks or hydrogen compressed as well as liquefied pressure vessels and also the pipelines um, for low pressure hydrogen conveyance like existing flat planes of design according to 31.3 the certain grades of asme uh, api uh, 5 l psl2 grades are suitable for hydrogen service but those uh, pipelines are in use for um, uh, hydrogen in refineries you know? So it's not that it is new in our country or globally, the standards. But yes, uh, there are developments happening, especially on um, gas cylinders, like you know, you have limitation because there, there is a need today for high pressure uh, hydrogen cylinders. So there are um, uh, pilot project is on, and then some people have already developed um, uh, non-metallic, uh, you know, that is um, composite materials for um, uh, hydrogen tanks for uh, different capacities, yes. But is there any, uh, let's say, website or any standard uh, where you would say, please start looking into this and from there on you will be able to dig deeper and deeper? You see, the philosophy of each um, codes and standards are different, like, you know, European um, codes design philosophy is different, US um, American philosophies are different, so, and we don't have a common, you know, um, a website or something where you have SME standards available and then European standards available, German standards available, or then harmonized uh, or global standards, so it is not at one place as in today, so, uh, 
we have like in india for example um, the, the 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 manufacturers or equipment manufacturer we are more familiar with um, uh, american standard due to the availability of materials and then they are used to for many years so but now an american courts as well as european courts these two courts uh, most of the industries are familiar with us mr adil uh, um, I would say, unfortunately, we don't have one website where you can go and uh, like uh, safetyhydrogen.com uh, um, in Europe. I would say we have, at least in Europe, we have a good situation that we have the European Union and everything what is safety related, you will find directives. If it's uh, elevators, if it's explosion protection, if it's uh, pressurized cylinders, uh, seagoing vessels, so you have for all these different directives, but I think you need to know um, how to bring this together. And uh, in these directives or to these directives, you will always find the harmonized standards, as I mentioned this. And um, the good thing with the harmonized standards, and that is a benefit of having one European Union, is um, that a lot of countries use this and try to bring this to an uh, international level together with the ISC. So we have the Senelec uh, working on this together with the ISC that, and this is good with India, they are also following the ISC standards. So as soon you are familiar and following these ISC standards, you can use this knowledge and you can be on a safe side inside Europe, but as well in, in India or other countries. Yeah, But um, I would say, uh, either there are two ways to get the information. Either you do you you go the hard way and you try to figure out by the internet which directives and standards are relevant, or you need to ask for a competent partner like the notified bodies. This is a good thing. Uh, what we established in Europe, we have notified bodies for the different application who are certified and uh, they have the knowledge how products or process needs processes needs to be designed to uh, do on a, a, or to handle this in a safe manner. You know? But you won't find anybody or web page which gives you an overview over the world. So it's, it's not possible. So also from my side, I, I took a long time before I got the understanding uh, just in Germany with all the different uh, safety standards, what we have here and how this is related then to the European or to other countries. Yeah? So, there's no no way to study this on the easy way. Okay, I th think we are coming uh, to an end, but uh, yeah, there's so many specific questions. Yeah. I don't even know if I should uh, test your knowledge and even ask again about specific standard and norms related to electrolyzers, which is the new topic uh, popping up, the ISO 20. Uh, 2734 has been mentioned. There's, for example, specific questions in the chat. If you have already experience with uh, AEL electrolyzer, since there is a uh, bolting involved uh, for the different stacks, I don't know if this is maybe already too much uh, uh, to ask for, but yeah, who knows, Mr. Uh, Ertel, Mr. Anil Kumar, anything in uh, regard to specific electrolyzer technologies like AEL? Do you have experience in? Yeah. Uh, gas protection with these electrolyzers already? Yeah, so I would say not me personally, but we have an engineering department. So which so um, gas detection is not that you have uh, one reset which solve all. So it's always depends on the uh, installation, the plan of the single customer so that we know about um, what are the environmental conditions, the process information. And then uh, based on this, um, we can make a proposal for um, gas detection system. And also for electrolyzer, like uh, based on uh, AEL, yeah, we had projects or we have projects where we made um, design proposals or we uh, also offered um, gas detectors to. Uh, the problem is always this is customer specific and that's something which we can't, I would say, share without having the um, allowance of these customers. But uh, in the case there are, I would say, specific questions or if um, um, I would say support is needed, we always uh, offer this service and we have also colleagues sitting in India um, giving support and they have experience 
And together with our engineering centers, we, we have not only in Germany, um, Germany, but as well in Singapore, in uh, Texas, in the uh, UK. So they are international experts giving local support and making design proposals. I would put it that way. Mr. Anikumar, anything from your side? Yeah, this um, electrolysis, um, uh, uh, the alkaline electrolyzer installations um, is already uh, uh, installed in India. And uh, I believe it's, uh, it's, uh, it's last year it is done. So it's under operations um, within India, alkaline electrolysis. Uh, but in general, the, the only standard uh, now available is ISO 734. And um, the manufacturers uh, India India also in the process of certifying this electrolysis for ISO 2734. But formally, uh, the 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 common product standard for the complete installations are yet to uh, come up. You know that's that's uh, wonderful. Then uh, thank you very much, and maybe a closing uh, remark from your side, Mr. Ertl. Any final statement you would like to make as a message uh, to our friends from India? Um, yeah, first of all, thank you for having the chance to join this and also the, have the possibility to give some, I would say, um, experience and information about, in general, about gas detection. And um, yeah, if, if there are interests, um, Feel free to contact us or myself to, to raise questions and um, I'm looking forward especially for this country um, for the future to um, how this will develop and um, this was a great pleasure to join here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Atul. Mr. Anil Kumar, final remarks from your side. Yeah, so India has a, a potential country and you know that is so there is a lot of things are happening and uh, India is taking lead on this renewable as well as the, the hydrogen initiative. So uh, all the stakeholders like, you know, so notified bodies, then, you know, the government the regulators and all the companies who are implementing these projects. So they have to come together and um, work together to make uh, hydrogen is safe and, you know, we will shift towards um, uh, net zero, uh, uh, like our minister's, uh, prime minister's vision by 2070 net zero. And not only for India, we will also contribute for all the other countries as well to make uh, globally this net zero possible on a global level. Yes, I'm sure. Thank you. Then thank you very much to uh, our esteemed speakers, Mr. Ertel uh, from Draga and Mr. Anil Kumar from TIF North, thank you very much. Also thanking uh, IGCC for having organized this important sessions. Thank you for making available uh, presentation later on for everyone interested. And uh, yeah, least, uh, last but not least, uh, thanking all the participants who've stayed uh, uh, online until now uh, with the specific interest uh, in this session. Thank you very much, Pooja for your uh, wonderful uh, moderation. And yeah, uh, looking forward to uh, further discussions and uh, uh, India to become this uh, global green hydrogen hub.